Here I have a wax pattern for a four unit framework. I've cut the ponics free from the abutments so that I could easily finish the margins of the abutments. I've reassembled the pattern on the working model and I'm ready to rejoin the parts and place my spruing. I'm only going to cover one connector. I've mounted the needle tip in my ultra spatula and I've set the temperature so that it's just above the melting point of the wax I'm going to be using to close this connector. I'm going to pick up a small droplet of wax and just put it right over the connector. Now let's go down the facial with just a little bit more. So I've waxed over the cut that I made to free the ponic from the abutment, but I have not melted the wax of either the abutment or the ponic itself. So the key here is that I've covered one connector and left one open. The rule is never join two parts of a wax pattern that would create a solid bridge until all of the spruing is attached and cool. The concept is that the attachment sprues and the runner bar actually stabilize the pattern in the proper position. I want to show you how to accomplish the spruing for this four unit wax framework pattern. I've mounted a quick sprue in the quick sprue instrument. The quick sprue is made of sticky wax. All I have to do is soften it and attach it. I've set my spatula temperature at the optimum temperature for spruing and I'm going to soften and melt the tip of the quick sprue and then place it in position on the pattern. For the ponic, I'll be using heavier sprues. This is a red quick sprue and it's equal to a six gauge round sprue. So just wet the tip of it and place it in position. And my last pattern is the mesial abutment of the bridge and it really requires only the 8 gauge sprue. So wet the end of the sprue and set it. Now I'm going to seal the quick sprues to the pattern. The quick sprue has a base on the top and the bottom to give you a little extra wax to allow you to seal the sprue to the pattern just by melting that little wheel. Make sure when you do this that you do not melt into the square area of the sprue. And I'm just going to continue down the line to do each facial surface of the quick sprue. And then I'll come back and do the linguals. Now the other pontic. And lastly, the final abutment. I've rotated the model around to the lingual, and now I'm going to continue sealing the quick sprues to the wax pattern. I'm still using my PKT1, and the temperature I like to do this at is 390 degrees Fahrenheit. I get just the smooth flow I want without destroying the pattern or the sprue. Here's what we want to see. Smooth, radiused connections. That will ensure that the metal has a smooth path to the pattern. I'm now ready to close the final connector. For this process, I want to use a very delicate tip at a low temperature. I do this so that I don't take a chance of distorting the wax pattern. You notice that I always use the ultra waxer and the wet waxer in combination. 
This allows me to have the coolest wax temperatures, but still be able to flow the wax. The coolest wax temperatures because the wax in the wet waxer is already liquefied. So I don't need high spatula temperatures to work it. So I'm just going to pick up a little drop of wax out of my wet waxer on the tip of my needle tip spatula and just seal over the connector, not melting the wax of either the coping or the pontic. And rotate the model around. And the same thing, a small droplet just over the top of the connector to seal the little cut made by the separating filament. My pattern is now ready to draw from the model, be placed into an investment mold and be invested for my casting process.